morning. I'm Father Jerome Chavaria, the pastor of St. James the Greater Catholic Church in Concord, North Carolina. Here, the Redemptorists have served this parish for many years. And I'd like to welcome you today to our gospel reflection for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Let us begin our, our reflection and our hearing of God's word with prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now listen to God's word. The Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you should also love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'll ask you to please bear with me this morning as we reflect on this Gospel from John. You see, we've just recently are kind of getting over our pandemic of the COVID virus. But now here in North Carolina, we're suffering from the pandemic of pine tree pollen. So I'm one of those suffering with it, so you might hear a little cough or a sneeze every now and then. Please bear with me. I'd like to share with you a story of a person who had a great impact on my early priesthood. Her name was Mrs. Maggie Lovelace. And she lived to be 103 years old. And when I first met her back in the early 80s, Miss Maggie was still the housekeeper for the Redemptorists in our parish rectory there in Florida. And she had served the community for over 40 years as housekeeper. She was well known by every Redemptorist that passed through that rectory. And she treated us all the same, with love and respect and kindness. She was a model of a person of service and a model as a person of faith. She touched all of our lives with the fact that she was generous in her service and in her giving of herself for the care of the fathers. And she had to be a saint because she put up with us redemptors for over 40 something years. So she was a special woman. I remember one of my first encounters with her in our parish was, I kept noticing every day when I just arrived there that my dirty clothes were disappearing. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. And so finally, a couple of days after I arrived, I, I saw Miss Maggie in the hallway and I said, Miss Maggie, can I ask you a question? Yes, Father. I said, well, I'm just wondering, my dirty clothes keep disappearing. And she goes, yeah, I know. I said, do you know where they are? She says, yes, I take them every day. And I wait and collect them, and then I wash them and return them to you. I said, oh, Miss Maggie, you don't need to do that. I've been doing my laundry for years. 
In the seminary, it was expected of us. As a matter of fact, I never ironed anything. That's why they made permanent press. She kind of smiled at me and she said, Father, you do your job, I'll do my job. A simple correction, if you will, of a person that spent many years in service and did not count it heavy cost to be a, to be a person of service and love to those that she cared for. And it wasn't just in the rectory that Miss Maggie showed her wonderful sense of love and respect. The fact is she treated everyone with dignity. She treated all the members of her community in this parish with dignity, and she was well known. Where she lived, all the people in her neighborhood knew her, Mrs. Lovelace. And they would often come to her for help, for guidance, because she was a wisdom figure. She even would take in people who didn't have a home, who struggled perhaps with mental illness or some kind of handicap, and it was not unknown that she would take care of people who were in search of safety and lodging for a couple of nights. She just had that spirit about her, a person of faith. Of course, she received her pay every week but it wasn't uncommon to find the check that Miss Maggie had received for her work in the rectory that it would be placed in the collection basket on the weekend. That's just who she was. A person of love, a person of service, a person in whom Easter had taken root, and a person who made a difference in the lives of so many and in the church. Miss Maggie lived in love, as Jesus says in the gospel today. And as we recognize even in our Redeemer's life, and Miss Maggie as well, and other Christians like her, when we live in love, we glorify God. That's important to grasp that. When we live in love, we glorify God, not just ourselves, not that others will like us or think highly of us or respect us more, but following the command of Christ to love one another as he has loved us. When we live that way, we glorify God. When we live in love, we follow the example of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who in these Easter days we remember as the great sacrifice offered to the Father for the salvation of the world. Because of his love, love conquered death. And because of his love, we are saved. Suffering isn't the only way to glorify God. But it is how Jesus glorified God. And Paul and Barnabas, in their first reading today, from the stories of their missionary journeys and travels, they give witness to this reality, that suffering gives glory to God, not because God needs suffering, but because we live in love. And that's what causes us to suffer. Because we give of ourselves, because we serve, because we're willing to go the extra mile in love. They wrote in their letter, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. That's just a statement of fact. Because as they went about preaching the gospel and the good news of Jesus in these communities that were of Gentile origin outside the realm of Judaism, as they went about proclaiming the gospel, people were responding. Not everyone that's why they talk about hardships for the sake of the name, for the sake of the gospel. Discipleship costs us. To love comes with a price at times. Jesus gave glory to God by his sufferings. And we see that particularly as we celebrated not too long ago Holy Week where we celebrate and remember Jesus' passion and his cross and his dying. It's important for us to remember it wasn't easy for Jesus to suffer. 
to help build up the kingdom. It wasn't easy to accept the will of his father and the call of the father to give everything for the salvation of his brothers and sisters, to be a servant, even in betrayal and rejection and physical pain. What we see in the life of our Lord is that Jesus loved till the very end, no matter what it cost him. He loved to the bitter end, and because of that, he has won our salvation. As Isaiah says, by his wounds, we have been healed. In this gospel story from John this morning, an important detail is mentioned before Jesus gives us the great commandment as we know it. It mentions Judas. Judas the betrayer, and Judas the betrayer who had just left the meal. It mentions that he had left after this confrontation with Jesus. And Jesus, because of this event, was keenly aware of what this meant and what was coming. Jesus remarks, my children, I will be with you only a little while longer. Evil would attempt to destroy Jesus. And its hour had come, as Jesus predicted. But so too had the hour of Jesus come to glorify the Father. Jesus remarks, now is the Son of Man glorified. And, glorif and God is glorified in him. How is God glorified in Jesus' hour of passion and suffering, the offering of his entire life? How is God glorified that? God is glorified because even in betrayal, Judas, physical rejection, the sufferings he endured, even the physical pains of carrying his brutal cross, Jesus loved, loved to the very end. And through that love, our salvation was won. God is glorified in our loving and in our service. You see, Judas, the betrayer, sold Jesus out. And all of us are capable of that if we turn and run when the Lord asks something special of us, when he calls us to live the gospel even when it's difficult and painful. We can turn and run and miss the opportunity to glorify God or we can embrace our cross and embrace our sufferings for the sake of the name and we too can give glory to the Father. And even though Jesus was sold out and betrayed by his own, with that knowledge, Jesus did not tell his apostles, look, fellows, protect yourself. Protect number one first. Make sure you take care of you. That's not what he said. He didn't say avoid people who could hurt you. In fact, the Gospel of Matthew, he says, if they slap you on this side, give them the other side. If they ask for a coat, give them your jacket too. If they ask for you to go a mile, go two miles. Love with an extraordinary sense of service and care. Jesus didn't say avoid people. He didn't say don't trust anyone. Only do a favor for those who can return it. That's not his teaching. No, Jesus told us, and his apostles, he told us, love one another as I have loved you. Love one another even when it isn't easy. Love one another when it costs you something, as it cost our Savior. Love one another when it asks more of you than you think you can even give. Love like I have loved you. 
Thank God for Maggie Lovelace and for other disciples like her. For people who enter our lives to evangelize us with their love and their service. For people who, like Christ, give everything so that the world might know through their hardships and trials that God is with us and that God saves us. May the Lord give us courage and strength. May he bless us with the same spirit on this first Sunday of Easter with which he blessed those early apostles. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to fast from former ways to newness of life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you with Easter joy and strength. May he deliver you from all trials and temptations, and may he bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you once again for joining us, the Redemptorist Online, in our preaching, and we hope you will join us next week for our next reflection. May God bless you. May the Lord be kind and protect you. Amen.